Hello friends, Steve Stockton here with you. Welcome to our latest episode. Join me. Let's walk and see. The Pine Barrens in New Jersey is the largest remaining example of the Atlantic Coastal Pine Barrens ecosystem, stretching across more than seven counties of New Jersey and the United States. The Pine Barrens remain mostly rural and undisturbed, despite its proximity to the sprawling metropolis of places like New York City and Philadelphia. And it's in the center of the very densely populated Boston-Washington corridor along the eastern seaboard. The heavily traveled Garden State Parkway and the Atlantic City Expressway traverse sections of the eastern and southern Pine Barrens, respectively. The protected wilderness covers more than one million acres of land. The Pine Barrens, or simply the Pines, as it's sometimes called locally, it's also a place of much local legend and lore. From alleged mob dumping sites to the Jersey Devil himself, there is so much mystery in this area of the Garden State, we could never know the truth of it all. In this episode, we're going to discuss one more mystery in a long line of many. Admittedly, one that most people probably haven't heard of and may never be solved. The circumstances surrounding the disappearance and demise of a local couple to this area are very strange indeed. Here's what we know so far. Here's the story of the strange and suspicious disappearance and demise of Gary and Lorraine Parker. On November 23, 2021, Gary and Lorraine Parker's daughter sent out a Facebook message and notified the local authorities that her parents were missing. The couple were residents of Warren Grove, which is a small, unincorporated community located within the Pine Barrens, a scant 37 miles north of Atlantic City. It seems that Gary, 67, and his wife, Lorraine, 60, decided to take a trip on their all-terrain vehicle into the Pine Barrens, which was located right near their home. This is something they did often and wasn't unusual in and of itself. What happened next, though, was very strange. Gary and Lorraine's daughter, Lindsay, posted on Facebook that her parents went missing at 1241 in the morning on the 17th. She later wrote, my parents' quad has been found along with my father's shotgun, which was strapped to it. Still no sign of either of my parents. Their quad was found stuck in a field not far from their home that my dad had used for years to bait deer. Trail cam footage has nothing after footage captured last week. Now, there was no exact date released as to when the couple actually went missing, aside from the fact that Lorraine was last seen on the 17th. Captain James Vaughn of the Stafford Police said he didn't believe the couple went hunting, noting that in the rural community, many people have shotguns readily available. Captain Vaughn continued that even if the couple were out in the Elmas for a few nights, he was hopeful they could survive because they are both avid outdoors people, he said. When the two-day search effort, which included more than 100 searchers, police dogs, ATVs, drones, and air support, failed to find the couple, Stafford police turned the search over to its detectives and the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office. The couple's disappearance is somewhat chilling and only lends to the terrifying mystique of the land itself within the Pine Barrens. The Stafford police hadn't given up their search even though they had officially handed it over. It was the same drone that had been used previously in the searches that eventually found the couple. Captain Vaughn stated about the discovery of the couple's bodies, the only way we were able to find them was by using a drone. He was describing the density of the woods in that area. We did have people in that area, but I can tell you, it's the thickest part of the Pine Barrens you're going to find. The couple's remains were found at around 1 p.m. the following Tuesday after they had been reported missing by their daughter, Lindsay. Captain Vaughn himself had taken part in the grid search, and he said there were wooded areas there that were virtually impassable. He continued, There were times I couldn't see six inches in front of my face and there were times I had to crawl underneath things to get through the brush. Again, without the use of the drone, it was nearly impossible. You could have walked by them and not seen them unless you were directly looking. It was very thick, very dense. The question still remains though, what exactly were the couple doing in such a dense and virtually impassable part of the Pine Barrens? They were found about 200 to 250 yards from their home and about 70 yards from the ATV they're believed to have driven into the woods. The search party was estimated to have covered over a thousand acres, Captain Vaughn said, citing the New Jersey State Police Missing Persons Unit. Now, about a week earlier, and the details are a bit sketchy here, a small amount of methamphetamine was found on the Parker's property. 
A law enforcement raid of a suspected drug lab approximately two miles away from the Parker residence fueled online sleuths and conspiracy theorists alike everywhere. The speculation grew so widely out of hand that the Stafford police felt compelled to write a statement in a news release regarding the investigation into the meth lab. It stated this investigation, meaning the lab raid, was not related to the missing persons investigation involving Gary and Lorraine Parker of Warren Grove. While authorities said they do not suspect foul play, they are being rather tight-lipped as to what they do think occurred. They said they believe the most likely scenario is that one of the pair had some sort of medical emergency and the other was unwilling to leave them to go for help. Now, there are plenty of flaws with this theory, though. How did they both end up dying then? Why were they in such a deep and dense, relatively unpassable part of the Pine Barrens? The couple would go out there often, remember, and presumably knew which areas were for hiking and riding, walking and recreation, and which areas clearly weren't. Why'd they left their ATV in the first place? And why leave the shotgun strapped to the ATV? The police stated in their initial report upon finding the off-road vehicle that it didn't seem as though it had crashed and wasn't damaged in any way. This, as with everything else, only lends more mystery to this already very strange case. If they didn't have an accident, then why leave the vehicle at all? Gary and Lorraine were found lying together some distance from their ATV. Though the injuries weren't listed or relayed to the public anyway, it was reported that they were heavily injured from sharp vegetation in the underbrush. Of this implausible mystery, Captain James Vaughn stated, I don't think we're ever going to know. I mean, there wasn't an ATV crash per se, but why they got off and why they ended up in the thicket the way they did that far from their house, we're never going to know. And there you have it. I look forward to reading your opinions on this case. But please remain respectful of the victims, victims' families, and the opinions of others. Be good to yourselves and each other. I'll see you a little farther on down the road. I'm Steve Stockton, and I'll talk to you next time.